So you actually make big machines that are involved with the chipsets and everything. So what do you do at the company? Yeah, exactly. We are uh, developing, producing, and selling uh, large programming systems. So those programming systems are programming on the chip level. This means the devices which can be programmed, whether it's flash memories or microcontrollers, secure elements, uh, secure microcontrollers, etc. They are put into the system by uh, tray or by uh, reel. There they are programmed, and then they are put to an output medium, which is once more a tray or a reel, and uh, uh, then can be used in the production. So uh, right there is your slides where you talk about uh, uh, what you yeah. the, the introduce the company. Okay, a short, short introduction of our company. So uh, Data O is US-based, headquarters in Redmond. We are founded in 1972, so we are nearly 50 years on the market already. Uh, what do we do? We produce and sell silicon device programming equipment and security deployment as a service. And this is basically what we will talk a little bit more today as well. We so are... when I look at some one of your slides, for example, there's a lot of silicon partners. Uh, uh, you're working with ARM, with the NXP, ST, Renaissance, Microchip, and and uh, also the, the service providers. So what is your role with all these companies? So starting with the silicon partners, with those, we are uh, in close contact to get uh, all the information about their devices and to be able to uh, program and provision their devices uh, with our system. So to, have, to understand that technology, their needs, how to uh, deal with uh, the devices they produce. And regarding the uh, service providers which are named here, those are the service providers who already now use our Centrix security deployment solution. So that means uh, the system is on their place. Uh, we are supporting this and the customer can use this and uh, offer this as a service to its, his customers. Uh, so um, maybe, maybe we can go back to your slides uh, right here. Maybe you can, uh, so what are you talking about at the embedded world? So now let me skip here the, the, the slide and go to, to one more. So we are talking about security. And uh, if looking at the security landscape, there are different players on the landscape. These are the OEMs, the service providers, the enterprises, the consumers, and all they have different needs. And the question is, well, how can OEMs deploy advanced silicon security in a cost-effective way? And what has to be deployed are these different applications which they are needing. So it's IT identification, identity, cloud onboarding, secure boot, and uh, others. But uh, which part do you provide in, in this? And so there, there, are, there are all these chips, right? The chip provider make the, uh, the CPU, the ARM SOCs or something like that. And you, what do you do? You, your big machine does a package or something? Or what do, what do you do with this? So the, I think uh, this is the slide to explain it a little bit more in detail. So we are producing the big system, which is here in the middle, and all the software around which is needed to program and provision uh, those devices, which are produced by uh, NXP, uh, ST, and, and all the other uh, large companies. So our system takes those devices puts the data in, puts all the secrets, keys, uh, credentials into uh, those devices and uh, repacks them and then they can be used in the manufacturing line. So it's, it, so uh, a chip provider is making a chip and you are putting stuff around the chip physically or uh, is it uh, to do with firmware or? So the chip provider is producing the chip and uh, our customer usually are uh, either OEMs or programming centers. Uh, they have a need to uh, program those chips to, to put uh, security into these uh, chips. So they are purchasing our equipment, our uh, Centrix equipment, for example. And uh, 
have uh, and, and the process then is basically divided into two uh, steps. So we have one step which is ha happening and at the OEM. The OEM is using a software, which is the centric product creator. Uh, and uh, with this software, he defines all settings which are needed for those devices, all functions, features. He adds keys to this. He adds certificates. He wraps and encrypts this and transfers this to the security provision system, which is uh, based uh, on the customer side. And here on the customer side, there's the system, the blank devices are, are put being put into the system, the devices are programmed and provisioned, and then repacked and uh, once more given to the uh, factory, to the electronic factory for further uh, well, processing and putting it on the PCBs already. So it could be like uh, uh, end users who want to make something extra secure, uh, something, but uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm, uh, there, there's data, Input output, right? That's the name of your company, right? So, uh, so you are. Yeah, basically, uh, yeah. yeah. What what we are producing is programming equipment. So that means that uh, each company or each uh, manufacturer who has an electronics uh, production line and needs data into the devices, into his devices, he is using in this line can use our equipment to put uh, this data into uh, those devices. And uh, with the Centrix, this is uh, then uh, one step further. So it's not just putting data into the devices, but it's also securing the devices using keys and certificates and, and uh, other security credentials. And uh, uh, thus making the device really unique and uh, secure against counterfeit and uh, things like this. All right. So if I if I uh, just uh, do a Google search uh, for data IO programmer, there's a bunch of results. Are they all from your company in the last fifty years? Uh, some of them, yes. I think there's not only our. So it looks like that uh, shown, but uh, this large one. Yeah, basically we have uh, two kinds of equipment. We have some um, uh, desktop equipment. And we have the large automated programming systems, which are used in the large electronic productions. Uh, is that also part of your technology there we're looking at? No, not no, really. Not this one, sorry. So okay. the, the Google search shows uh, a bunch of stuff, yeah. A bunch of stuff, not, not only ours. All right. And then it's a big machine. So who, who, uh, who buys these? Uh, as I mean, you already mentioned, right? Yeah, so, so these systems are bought uh, uh, by electronic uh, manufacturers. This uh, might be EMS companies, uh, OEMs, uh, and uh, programming centers as well, who provide the programming of, uh, of the chips as a service to other electronic manufacturing. Uh, so, so what more you would show in your presentation? Did you have a roundtable at the Embedded World? Yeah, we had uh, several roundtables here in the Embedded World. Um, especially to show our uh, centric solution for the uh, secure provisioning of devices. And uh, there we were also showing a live demo uh, on our software, Centrix product creator software, which is new and which also was uh, uh, we, uh, we get the, uh, just load my, my, <coughs> my, um, Yes. So we were uh, awarded with the, or we would like have to be awarded with the embedded award. Unfortunately, we just um, came into the last three, but uh, another company got this award. Uh, but uh, two years ago, we were awarded uh, with the embedded award and, uh, for our centric solution in total. This year, uh, we had the chance to, to get it also with a further development of our uh, product. And this is the Centrix video that explains, uh, but maybe it also shows similar stuff that what, what you're showing on the slides. Yes, it's similar. It shows once more who are the players uh, 
on the field of the uh, security, who has need in security, and uh, the different players have uh, different uh, focuses, what they need in, in the whole process. So for the enterprise, for example, they have to be robust uh, according to uh, future requirements which are in the market. The customers, of course, they want to have that their identity is protected. OEMs uh, don't want to have the possibility of counterfeit of their products. And uh, here we see some pictures which, which as of today, were the, in the traditional in-house deployment of security, which are the roadblocks. It was high cost, it was high complex, it was a lack of collaboration tools between production and uh, uh, development. And all those things we are addressing with our centric solution to make it much, much easier and to simplify all this process. All right, and maybe Andreas, uh, are, are you going to show how it works or what are you going to talk about? Um, I can show, I was planning to show the user interface, how the end user or the OEM um, would use our software to set up his security credentials so that they then can be used in production to start provision devices. Uh, so maybe you can, uh, you can share your screen, how you do that or? Uh, yes, let me just show it. And this is a, the video is continuing there to show more of the security deployment as a service. Mm -hmm. Yes, <clears throat> deployment as a service means that uh, we have a service model which allows our customers really to have really low upfront cost. We have no minimum quantities uh, in this process. So we can start really with just one device or go to millions of devices. Uh, to program and uh, it's a really easy to use process we have and this is what Andreas will show some predefined use cases so to make it for the customer easier to uh, get all the input into the system which is needed or requested by the chip manufacturers we have a highly secure solution here. It is compliant to FIP 140. It supports hardware rules of trust. The uh, secrets are cryptographically protected. And uh, we offer it as a service. So basically our customers pay just per part or they can upgrade existing programming system they have in the field already, which belong to the customers uh, to add this service to the service that they provide today already. Uh, so is your technology deployed in millions and millions of, of products out there? Uh, so this was one, one thing also uh, on the first slide. Uh, we have an installed base of more than 300 of, of our programming systems worldwide. And uh, with those, we cover basically a capacity of about 1 billion devices to be programmed per year. 1 billion chips per year. Can be programmed per year with an installed base we have with our devices. So these, these machines are like a, a desktop size or something like that, but they can process tens of hundreds of thousands, millions even of no, the yeah, you see it here in, in the in the middle in this picture. There are some of our systems. So these are no desktop systems. They are really standalone, uh, large systems for production purposes. They have a high throughput. All right. So maybe I can uh, I can share Andreas's screen. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, please. And uh, what are we looking at here? Uh, we're looking at the software that um, OEM would use to set up his security credentials. Uh, let me show the demo by demoing the setting up uh, credentials for an Infineon TPM 2.0 device. So just selecting the device, selecting the software version. At the next uh, step, the software will um, show the so-called predefined use cases. Predefined use cases are settings and groups of settings defined by data the device manufacturer 
to cover the most common settings in order to make it easier for an OEM to find out the correct settings. In this example, we will be using selecting chip authentici authenticity to check the, that the device was indeed manufactured by Infineon. We will also select creating an anti-counterfeit identity and creating a cloud onboarding identity. These are two identities established in the TPM device that can then be that will be used later in the end product to ident properly identify the device and bind them to the OEM producing the device. And by the way, any combination of use cases can be used or selected. Uh, so, so um, this is a software people use uh, when they are connected with the with the, for example, the PSV seven thousand. Uh, no, that's the whole point. That this software is standalone. It can be used at any um, any laptop, any PC, at the OEM site. The OEM, there's no requirement to be connected to the actual programming facility, um, as this would kind of defeat the purpose of allowing the OEM to easily set up a product definition without having access to the to the programming center to the factory. Uh, so, so uh, the programming center, the factory, as you call, is 300 physical locations in the world that have these bigger machines? Uh, not 300 locations, but 300 machines. And uh, think about in Europe about 20 to 50 locations. So it could be a programming house. It could be an uh, off-site off electronics manufacturer. It could be your own... Um, factory to produce electronics. Either one works. Uh, uh, are there many uh, thousands and thousands of people that understand and know how to use this? Uh, <laughs> that's uh, hundreds, yes. Hundreds. hundreds. And so the, uh, the, the people that, that work with this software are, mm -hmm. uh, their, their role is to uh, optimize, um, finalize before Mass production, or what is what is this part? Uh, the role is handing over to mass production, and the people who would be using it are typically software engineers or security experts. So these would be the persons that are familiar with how security works, how credentials works, and those are the people managing those creden credentials. Uh, when it says the anti counterfeit uh, mm -hmm. identity security going on in there. Um, how does a, how do people counterfeit chipsets or machines or products or is it something that happens? Uh, absolutely. Um, in today's world, every single product uh, is affected by counterfeit. Uh, it doesn't matter how small or how how little the value are. The higher the value, the more likely is that some something will be counterfeit. But how how can they counterfeit like a chipset from Renesas or? And oh, they will get the chip differently, and then counterfeit the the product. And uh, you can um, you can counterfeit the whole product by rebuilding the PCB and the hardware. Um, that's relatively easy to do if you have the the right equipment. And then the only thing that can be done by an OEM to make sure that this hardware was actually built by him is by using security chips. And those security chips then having a identity that can be bound to the OEM. So a cell phone manufacturer puts in a chip, a security chip, provisioned by this cell phone manufacturer. And this identity in the security chip will then be used in the field to verify that this piece of hardware was actually manufactured by the OEM and not is not a counterfeit product. And uh, th these modern uh, Cortex M33 kind of chips have uh, hardware security on the SOC. Is it something like that that can be used for this, or or where where is the security chip? Uh, it can be either one. Um, there are different classes. One, the easiest class is a standalone security chip. So it's a single piece of hardware that only manages security and has um, keys and identities stored. The next higher class would be secure microcontrollers. That is, as you said, 
a microcontroller with additional hardware integrated. Um, and this hardware will be used to store secret identities. And it's completely impossible to, to counterfeit that. Um, I wouldn't say the word impossible. Um, the goal is to make it as hard as possible so that it's no longer beneficial, so that cracking the security is more will cost more than the benefit is. And there really are, like uh, in China or somewhere in Thailand or something, some companies trying to counterfeit a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, uh, it, it, uh, because I could imagine that it requires so much, so much work that uh, it doesn't. It's well, I guess there's uh, there's some products that are there's maybe, maybe more attractive for them to try to counterfeit it. I guess. Um, of of course, not everything will be counterfeit, but uh, almost all products are. Uh, in danger of being counterfeit. And uh, when I look behind you, it says trusted, secured, integrated. Yeah. Uh, so it's not only about anti-counterfeit, it's about many other things, right? Uh, um, counterfeiting is one risk. The other risk is that uh, the pro product could be manipulated. Uh, think of a <clears throat> microcontroller in a car and somebody would change the firmware or actually the, the motor... Uh, motor engine software, uh, that's a common problem. So manufacturers need to make sure that only verified firmware is installed on the product, that third parties uh, are not able to up, um, install manipulated firmware. Uh, so when I go around your website, there's stuff under solutions. Mm -hmm. So the automated programming systems uh, the centric security provisioning, that's what you're talking about, right? Yes. Uh, so those are the big desktop machines here. And then there's manual programmers. So, uh, those are the, the big, um, no, des the desktop programmers are the, the manual ones you, you mentioned, and the others are really big standalone systems. Uh, PSV 7000, PSV 5000 are the big standalone systems. Yeah. And these are the smaller ones like that? For automated programming, and uh, those are the small manual programmers. Mm -hmm. You right. have to put the chips in really manual, so these are for for labs or for, uh, for well, first articles, for example, but not for mass production. So there are slots and to put the chip in each of these, or? Exactly. In, in each of these sockets, you have to put a chip, and this is the same technology which is then used in the large systems. There's, uh, the difference is that uh, the chips are put into these programmers then uh, by a handling system, so it's fully automated. Uh, these kind of machines, they cost like uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, or what kind of, uh, do you talk about that, the prices, or? Well, yes, so, so it's, it's more hundreds of thousands, yes. So it's very specialized, very precise kind of technology that goes on in there? Exactly. So such a system, if you're looking on the large PSV 7000, uh, we uh, program up to 2000 devices uh, per hour and it's uh, running uh, really 24-7. Uh, so it's really for high volume mass production. And what goes in there with these rolls? On well, these rolls, uh, these are the tapes with the, uh, with the chips. So the, they are... Uh, the, the customers get them on tapes, for example, and uh, the system takes them out of these tapes, puts them into these programming sockets that they are programmed and provisioned. And uh, if this process is uh, finalized, the handler takes them out of this socket and puts them to the output device, uh, which can be once more the uh, tape. And then this tape is put to, to the production line. Uh, so your machines are used by SMT lines? They are used by uh, as manufacturers who use SMT lines as well, exactly. So it's like your machine would be one of these machines on the way in SMT? Uh, mm -hmm. it, it would be in parallel to this. So the uh, offline programming is a parallel process to the process in the SMT line, thus not, uh, um, not adding a process time to the process of the SMT line because it's a parallel process. And when we look at uh, uh, automotive flash growth, uh, we're talking about 
uh, there's more and more data, more and more uh, cameras, more and more Exa chips in these cars. Ex exactly. The uh, data needs of uh, cars are really rapidly growing. And uh, as a result, you need uh, high-speed programming capacities and possibilities uh, to, to uh, program these uh, very, very large uh, data files. And if you would do this uh, in the production line, this would mean it would add a lot, a lot of time to the production of the boards. And therefore, uh, this is done here as a parallel process, which is not adding any time to the uh, uh, production line. All right. So uh, you are a very important part of the industry, like everybody who does chips is a customer. Of course, we are an important part of the of the industry. So, uh, programming is something uh, in today's electronics. You always have something which has to be programmed. So, basically, for each uh, production uh, of electronics, our equipment uh, is something they uh, they can use. All right. Um, so, what else are you talking about? Uh, you've been to Embedded World for many years. Uh, your company last 50 years. Now, I don't know how, how long in better world has been, <laughs> been going on, but... Uh, well, we, we have usually been uh, at Productron in Productronica exhibition, and we started to join Embedded World about four or five years ago when we introduced our Sentry solution, because uh, then we started really to uh, deal with uh, security, and uh, this was uh, well, a perfect fit for, for, for the Embedded Systems. Um, there is one process change when it comes to security. In the traditional electronics development world, usually a product is developed. So the hardware is developed, the software is developed, is tested, released. And then when everything is done and finished, then you hand it over to production. So that usually means that the software development engineer develops his software, he finishes the, the project, the project is done and over with for him. And then a year later, maybe, um, there's the transition to mass production. The problem in that process is that the people who are, who are involved in development, they may not be available anymore because they're already on the ne next project. Now, that's a problem you can work around in the uh, traditional electronics manufacturing, but this is starting to cause big headaches when we talk about security because with security, you need to provision keys and everything into the devices in mass production and you need to set up this process during development time not after not after the um, you need to develop the process and you need to set up mass production as early in the development process as possible to make sure that security really works and there are no holes in the security design for this reason we have been going to the starting to go to the embedded show to get more contact to developers to make people um, to make sure that people are uh, understand the issues in the process or the changes that are required in the development process to really include security in their devices. So our goal is to address the development engineers, make them understand and aware of the process changes and how security affects mass production of electronics. Uh, and so what, what are the demands that they have? What, uh, what did they hope that you would bring that, uh, what's next? Do you have stuff on a roadmap also that you're talking about? Or uh, uh, what is the discussion usually at the embedded world? Um, the discussion is usually, here's my product. How do I get it into mass production? Or at least that's what we, we are talking about. Yeah, and then, it, then it's uh, about uh, more and more devices to be supported by our system. So we have, uh, it's also on the web page, a list of devices we support already today. And we are adding more and more uh, devices. Uh, so the more and more, uh, well, for more and more projects, uh, this can be used in the, in the long end. All right. So uh, every chip that goes out there in the, in the world, and especially in more and more important uh, products, there's more and more security in consideration. Like 10, 20 years ago, maybe cars 
didn't really consider anything about security, right? They were just, uh, I don't know, running kind of like open or something like that. But now everything is, the, everybody wants to have more security everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they might have 100 chips and they all need to be secure and they need to have unique IDs, unique, uh, unique security in each of the chips, identifiable uh, stuff in there. Exactly. And you get you get in there, and you 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 make it all. Yeah, we, we we make it possible to do this really in mass production as a uh, well, parallel secure process. All right. And uh, the device. Go ahead. No, please go ahead. Yeah, what you were saying. Um, and the device manufacturers are adding exactly those features into their chips. If you look at the changes in the microcontroller um, development. Almost all families are adding secure elements or secure features to their microcontroller families. And when they do that, it provides you with uh, more access, uh, even more. You can put all your stuff in there. Um, it provides the OEM, the, the user developing the application, um, with the ability to put secure stuff in there, secure keys, secure identities, and so on. All right. Uh, Cool. So how many how many uh, roundtables did you do in uh, Embedded World? We had a roundtable every day. And uh, so in these roundtables, we were exactly talking about uh, these uh, security issues and uh, we're live, uh, doing a live demo every time about uh, the uh, product creator software to, to show how this is really done at, at the OEM. And uh, in addition, we had uh, also every day a jump-in discussion, also with different, uh, well, different themes about uh, security. It was also quite interesting to see how many people were participating in those. Nice. So I'm trying to load right here your, uh, this is your, uh, right there. This is your uh, embedded world digital booth right uh exactly with these images also showing the machines exactly so this is uh, then inside the machine showing the uh, uh two heads which are picking up the devices and putting them into the sockets to be programmed and then uh, processing them further and here you see the, the, the sockets in, in which the, the devices are put into this uh, and uh, programmed. Once more, some images of the machine. Here an example with a tray. So, so that would be full of chips? Yeah, this would be full of chips. So this is one of the input-output options to have the chips on tray. The others would be on tape. All right. Colleagues? And here's, I see an Atmel chip. Yeah, so you see here just a, a bunch of uh, chips showing that uh, we can handle really uh, each size and each vendor of chips can be handled by our systems. Why do I see an SD card? Well, also SD cards are being pre-programmed sometimes. Uh, also, this can be done with our systems. All right. Uh, so this is what happens and people can also watch the video. Maybe it's the one we were checking out before, or is it a different one? It should be the same. The same, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and that was the embedded world. And your colleagues right here, people can contact. And, that and then from there, you were doing your, your round tables and your presentations. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it can be downloaded here, of course. We have the data sheet of our centric solution. We have our general product catalog. So all information can be found here on the web page of the show of the embedded, and of course on our web page as well. All right. So thanks a lot for talking about your your technology mm -hmm. on my YouTube channel here uh, for the Embedded World 2021. Uh, there's just one question came in. Uh, any use case for automotive industry, like connected cars? Yeah, we were talking about that a little bit before, right? This is a big deal. Exactly. So especially uh, automotive is uh, our largest customer segment. So uh, about 60% of our uh, 
sales is uh, in the automotive sector. Mm -hmm. I think this we are well known there and uh, can support really uh, every use case. Pretty much like uh, the top 10 car manufacturers in the world, they all your customer or? So it's the, uh, well, of the automotive uh, companies, it's not only the, auto, the car manufacturers, uh, these are the large uh, um, OEMs. Uh, uh, OEMs for the cars like, like uh, Bosch, Continental and, and others. So uh, nine out of 10 of them are our customers. All right. So that's everybody. So the, the, the one that is not your customer, they, they, do, they don't care about security. I'm joking. But they do <laughs> something else, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. So thanks a lot. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And more information on your website. And you will have uh, maybe more uh, YouTube videos and stuff in the future. Maybe to, it'd, be, it'd be nice to show, to see how this, these big machines work and what mm -hmm. goes on. Because it looks like it could be great to see that on video. Okay, right. yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank Thanks you. for watching.